Jesse here, back in the world of Adopt Me. I'm joined this time by Josh Ling. Hey, it's me, Josh. It's Josh. Ling, from, from Twitter? the Adopt Me team. Oh yeah, and also from the Adopt Me team. Less famously from the Adopt Me team. Very famously from Twitter. <laughs> you should follow me on Twitter. and at Tactful. I throw it up on screen every time. I know how important it is to get used more Twitter followers. Yeah, but let's get to 10k. <laughs> In this video, we get Josh to 10k. This video is no longer an Adopt Me video, it's now a Adopt Josh video. Anyway, the point of this video, we will be playing with some of the new pet accessories that are on this rotation, while also answering questions sent to us direct from the Adopt Me community on Instagram, Discord, and Twitter. So this could be a fun one. Yeah, I'm excited to answer some of the questions that people have had. So I'm gonna kick things off. Our first category is questions about Adopt Me. Awesome. What's Adopt Me? Yeah, the question number one. What is Adopt Me? Now, hopefully everyone watching knows that. Um, we're gonna avoid we're gonna avoid the obvious questions. Who comes up with the update ideas? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so it's a very collaborative uh, process. So different people on the team come up with different ideas. I'd say at the moment, a lot of the ideas have been coming from like a select few people, including like beeping. Um, some of these are like my pitches. So someone will come up with an idea and then they'll like share it with the team and like get feedback. But more and more we're moving towards this model where like the uh, ideas can come from anywhere. We take in a lot of like community feedback as well. So a lot of these ideas, like for instance, a lot of these cosmetic ideas um, or a lot of like the updates that you see are just from community feedback on Twitter or YouTube or Discord or even just in-game, like playing with people and chatting. Yeah, so the, idea, the actual ideas come from a variety of sources and then the people coming up with the ideas is basically like Anyone on the team, in theory, can come up with an idea and, and like pitch it to the rest of the team. Well, that's cool. So you'd say it's definitely important for the community to let us know what kind of things they'd love to see coming 100%, up. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Like, I could just off the top of my head, I could think of like a bunch of stuff which came directly from the from the community or from like uh, watching YouTube or on Discord or yeah, just chatting to players in game. Of all the pets so far, which pet took the longest to make? That's interesting. Um, well, we're working on a monkey pet at the moment, which you might have seen teased on Twitter. So maybe Jesse can throw up a, like an image. <laughs> yeah, this pet's taking long because the body type is like more human-like, so it's got like arms, which take longer to animate. Other than that, I'm trying to think. Um, any pet that has a lot of moving parts that requires anime uh, takes longer for sure, because there's more things to animate. So some of like the best pets, like the most popular pets, actually didn't take that long. And some of the less popular pets actually took a long time, cause, just because they had like more body parts. I'd say it's like, the, it's not necessarily the pets that take, take so long, besides the animations. It's more like the stuff that comes along with the pets. You know, the bees in the bee shop, um, they didn't take too long to animate. They still took a while, but not, not as long as other pets. But the actual like renovation of the coffee shop and making all of the stuff that comes along with it took a while. Are there plans to bring back any of the old eggs in the future? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we don't know. So we've had a lot of discussions about this and we've talked to a lot of players as well. So there's a balance between like new players. Let's say you're a new player who joined like today. Like you're watching this video and you go play for the first time. So there's a lot of old eggs which you just have pets you just can't access. That kind of sucks because you can't get pets. You can't you just can't get these pets. I mean, you can trade for them, but some of the older pets are just so rare, it's just so hard to trade for them. So I think it would be cool to rotate back in old eggs. But on the flip side, obviously people, if you can't get the pets, they're more rare. Um, so we wouldn't want to like hurt people's, the value of people's pets. Yeah, something we've talked about doing is doing like a version two, like jungle egg or something. Uh, maybe it has like two extra pets in it, but all of the pets are clearly marked as from version two. So although they're like the same pet, or, or they're the same pet with a slight difference, there would be like version one jungle egg pets, which would be clearly marked as such, and then like version two jungle egg pets. So the, like a version one giraffe would still be rare because it it was from, you know, the 2019 egg or whatever. Kind of like in trading cards or something, you know, you, you, or you can get, or like a, a print run, you know, you, it would be clearly marked as being from a specific set. But yeah, it's something we're thinking about. It's not something we plan on doing anytime soon necessarily. But yeah. If you have faults, let us know, because this is obviously one where we want to, we basically want to balance for fun. We want the most people to be having the most fun. Yeah, we'll go with the option that I think benefits the, the most people, gives them the most fun experience. Yeah, that makes sense. I really like the idea of first edition pets, personally. Yeah, yeah, because you would have like an OG giraffe from like 2019 and no one could ever like, it would be so hard to get that pet. Now, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any other videos in the future. Yeah, we have Instagram and Twitter as well. So you should subscribe there. We have a Discord for over 13 users. If you're 13 or older, you can come on Discord and chat with us. All of those are linked in the description below every video we upload here. So if you ever want to follow us on one of those platforms, it's very, very easy. Okay, back to our questions. Uh, we've got a very serious question that I want you to really give your full attention up next. Mm -hmm. Does naming my pet Arnold 
make it any rarer? <laughs> Does naming your pet Arnold make it any rarer? Well, in the sense that it will be one of the few pets named Arnold. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, probably not. <laughs> Back to our more serious questions about the game. Are there any plans in the near future to add more new places in the main map, like we did with the hat shop? Oh yeah, 100%. So yeah, we have some stuff we're working on, which it like adds new areas, like the hat shop. I think it'll always be something that we do some, somewhat, yeah. But we're also trying to like renovate new areas, uh, old areas as well. So like, like the pet shop, you know, got like a makeover and some new items in it and stuff like that. So yeah. So like a balance between improving the old and adding new, adding cool new areas to explore or with like new features and stuff. Yeah, we're just trying to balance it against like how much we can actually accomplish as a team as well. See, so Adopt Me is a huge game. And there's a lot going on like underneath the surface, which players don't see, which makes like adding new content more time consuming for us because we have to make sure it works, not just with the existing system and underlying systems, but we also need to make sure that everything we add works with like our huge player base as well. The new monkey update has a, should have an area, like a, an interior area you can explore. So talking about places on the map, was it always the plan to have the vault open and lead to pet accessories or did the vault come first and then the idea come later? Oh, the vault came first and then the idea came later. As soon as we put it in, we were like, oh yeah, we can make something cool be inside this vault. Obviously I joined the team around the time, I think just after the vault was added. I always assumed that the plan was to lead to pet accessories. I thought it was oh. just a cool tease. Uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, it, it was it was very close though. It was like, hey, we've added this vault. What can we put inside? We need to put something inside it. Hey, we're doing this like huge dress your pets update, pet accessories update. Well, let's tie it into that as part of like this uh, live event, like hype update thing. How did you feel about how the Dress Your Pets live event went? And would you do more live events like that in the future? Yeah, it could have been bigger. <laughs> 1.6 million people isn't that many people. No, I'm kidding, it was awesome. I don't think technically it could have been bigger. <laughs> well, yeah, no, actually, yeah. I think, it could, actually, I think if, if Roblox didn't have server allocation issues, that it would have gone even higher. Like, not maybe not 2 million, but maybe like 1.8 or something. But yeah, it was a huge update. It was a lot of work from our side. Um, I saw a few comments where it was like, wow, Adopt Me got this many players for just putting hats on pets. But like, there's a lot of underlying considerations with the update. Like, for instance, this whole area, the rotation, the setup, the hypes, and the countdowns all required work. Um, actually making every accessory look good on every pet um, took a lot of work from the team, so. A lot of like going through and manually like uh, creating like plugins and tools to, to make it easier to add new accessories and stuff and test them out. Um, and then retroactively adding all these points, these connection points for like so many pets took ages. And then there was loads of testing and stuff as well. So it was a huge amount of work from our side. Definitely our biggest update in terms of work since pets. Um, and yeah, to see so many people enjoying it was amazing. Definitely, we want to do more like live events. We got a lot of feedback on the live event that'll help us improve it next time. Like more clearly direct players to where the event's happening and add more like cool things going on and stuff. So yeah, I think we're definitely going to do more stuff like this in the future. Uh, if you have any ideas or feedback, please let us know. We read pretty much everything we can and take it into account when, when, building, when building new updates, new events, so. Yeah, I, I don't know what the next big one will be. You know, there are a lot of ideas that we're talking about and hopefully even more good ideas to come. So yeah, it'd be really, it's gonna be really exciting, really exciting summer, um, despite, you know, other things, go, other circumstances. There's gonna be a lot of fun things to do over the next few months. And of course, if you weren't there for the live event, you can see a video of it, including many of the Adopt Me YouTuber reactions on this YouTube channel. Uh, and it will be linked at the end of the video in the end card. So feel free to check that out. I think the work that was done on, um, like all the animations and stuff was really cool. I think it's really exciting seeing live so many people enjoying it. So I'd encourage you all to check that out and be there for the next live event we do. So that's it for game questions. We're now moving on to section number two, questions about the Adopt Me team. Hell yeah. We got a lot of questions about this, because obviously for a lot of people, the game is fairly open and you can kind of see it. A lot of the questions, you know, if you've played for long enough or you see um, enough of the game, you can kind of sometimes puzzle them out. But the team is, a lot of them aren't as public facing. So I think this will be a really exciting look for people into more on, on how Adopt Me comes together every week. Sounds good. How many people work on Adopt Me now? So we have, 29 to 9, what we call full team members. People who are fully integrated into the team. 
Uh, and then we have a couple additional contract days on top of that. 29, which is a big number, but I think that number is going to go up even more. I think maybe by the end of this year, that number will be maybe double, double that, maybe more. Yeah, we're always hiring hiring new people where it makes sense. Trying to build a team that can make Adopt Me like the best, most fun uh, game, not just on Roblox, but, but you know, anywhere. Very upset that Roblox has not allowed me to type Cena in. <laughs> so I can't call this frog, Frog Cena. <laughs> I say, when I joined the team, uh, I joined the team in June uh, last year, 2019. When I joined, there were only four people. Or, I mean, it depends whether you count part-time or not. But yeah, I, I was either the fourth or fifth person to join the team. Yeah, since last summer, we've, we've gone from four people to 29, <laughs> which is a big jump, as you can imagine. That comes with its own challenges and, and solutions, but also its own joys and happy moments. You know, I think launching pet, Dress Your Pets last Last week or the week before was was a huge like a huge moment for the team. We were all in a Discord channel together, all chatting and like watching the numbers go up and then fixing the problems when like Roblox starts to have problems, like fixing them and like communicating with players and stuff. Yeah, it's been it's been interesting. There's definitely a lot a lot more to do. Yeah, I'm I'm extremely excited and and to work with uh, all of the people I work with. 28 other people, including you, Jesse. Yeah, I'm alright to work with. We've been we've been friends for a long time, but. And we've worked together before, but this is, this is definitely the most uh, stupid videos we've recorded together. <laughs> I mean, we definitely recorded some stupid videos. I was going to say we've done some stupider videos, but <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of the of the studio that we're building here. Adopt Me is a huge game uh, with a huge community. Thanks to the to all of the players who choose to play, who who buy things in game, who or just who play and uh, promote us to, to their friends. You, you've enabled us to, to start building this huge team. And the purpose of building that huge team is to make sure that Adopt Me gets the support and, and the love it needs it, in terms of like development for hopefully for, for years to come, you know? Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited about the future of Adopt Me and maybe other, other cool stuff too. Who knows? Now you said, obviously you were really proud of the team for the, the Dress Your Pets live event and the update. Would you say that that is the team's biggest accomplishment so far? I think that's hard to say. We do a lot of stuff which players don't will never see like under the surface what we'd call like back-end changes or underlying like systemic changes, which improve the game. And these are things that not only will players not see, they won't even, you wouldn't, if, if it's working, you wouldn't even know it properly. So I think it's hard to pinpoint any one achievement. And then also like building like this YouTube channel has like 400,000 people now or whatever. Whenever you're watching this video, you'll, you'll see it's a big number. And all of that has grown from scratch since the start of this year. I wouldn't say there's one like massive achievement for which I'm like proud of the team, but more like a, a succession of smaller things. I think I'm more proud. I'm not proud of any one thing. I'm more proud of the team itself. The talented people we've got here, the people who are learning and the kind of work that we're able to do. Games like ours, they're they're not, you know, one and done, like build it, ship ship it, release it and get it and and then we're done, you know. Adopt Me is like a living, evolving product. And so I think for me it's more important that we have like some just some great, talented, fun people working on the game that can just continuously push out these updates. Like at the moment we're on this weekly update schedule. Just releasing the sheer amount of content we do, we do compared to other games and compared to other non-Roblox games. I think our output is quite high relative to our input. Uh, when I talk to my friends who work on other games, big games like um, Apex Legends or League of Legends, games like that. When I tell them that we build this game for millions and millions of people with just just 29 people, they're shocked. They're like, how, how do you do that? Oh my God, like we've got hundreds and hundreds of people working on, on our games. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> well, you know. We manage. Thankfully, we have a really positive and awesome community that's really supportive and uh, understanding. Without obviously going into every person's job title, what kind of different roles does Adopt Me have now? We have programmers, and our programmers are mostly split into game, what we call gameplay programmers and systems programmers. So gameplay programmers are people who are working on more front-end stuff that players will see, sort of content that they might interact with, although they do do some sort of like behind-the-scenes systems-y and frame, framework-y stuff. Uh, and then we have systems engineers who are building the underlying systems. Yeah, and then outside of that, we have a comms team, which you're, you're, you're on. <laughs> Those people support the game in terms of like social media and videos and and we've just hired a community manager and uh, an influencer manager. Basically like how we, those people contribute to how we talk about Adopt Me and, and how we like get the message out about updates and stuff so that players like hear about it and get excited and, and play it. Uh, we have a support team as well who answer 
support tickets. So we have like a bunch of people on the support team who are really talented and they have to get players the help they need. And obviously sometimes some players and honestly some parents are very angry or, or, or are lying or, or have other other problems. So, you know, they have to deal with that as well. So if you're if you are contacting support, please be please be polite. Please be kind because there's a small number of people who are who are mean. And then we have art as well, creative. So we have artists, 3D artists who make models and textures, an animator, full-time in-house animator who animates our models. And we've started to build out other systems as well that you might find in a more typical traditional game studio. Things like QA, which stands for quality assurance, which basically just means like testing the updates for, and trying to find bugs so we can fix them before we release. As the team grows, we're essentially transitioning to looking more like a traditional games company in terms of internal structure. Yeah, that's the plan. I mean, we want to take all of the good bits from like our favorite game studios uh, that make like that are really cool and good and make our favorite games and maybe not take the bad bits like horrible working conditions <laughs> and <laughs> um, you know decisions that aren't in the player's best interest. Like I think a lot of people don't realize, but like every decision we make, we try and evaluate what will be best for the players, what will be most fun for the game, not just in the short term, like in the next week, but in the long term for the many months that people might be playing Adopt Me. We never make decisions that are just about money or just about um, like engagement. Yeah, most of the most of the decisions we make are like what what will be most fun for the player, like what makes most sense for for Adopt Me as, as a game. When you do big kind of company wide meetings. People want to know, who's the funniest on the team? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> hmm. You know who's funny? Zoe, Zoe's quite funny. Yeah, actually. She's cracked me up a few times. Great restraint to not say yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Jesse. Who do you think is the most funniest on the Oh, absolutely me. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're funny. You're funny. A lot. Everyone on the team has a great sense of humour. So even if they're not cracking jokes, like everyone's definitely vibing. Um, Z's funny. I think I'm funny. <laughs> but I'm biased because I am me. Do you and other Adopt Me team members have good relationships with each other outside of work? No, can't stand them. Get them out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I just clock in, get my paycheck and clock out. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I have a great relationship with everyone on the, on the team. I'm, I've been thankfully, I've been kind of blessed in my career to work with teams of people that I actually get on with and make friends for life and stuff. Like in previous jobs, I, I still chat with people like every day. But yeah, I get along really well with everyone on the team. Like, I'm not saying that I'm like best friends with everyone on the team, and especially as we scale more, it's hard to like have a deeply personal relationship with like so many other people. I really, really enjoy working with with everyone on, on the team, which is rare, you know. You, when you're if you're watching this video and you're like in school, um, you know, when you get older and you're and you're working in jobs and stuff, my recommendation would be, if possible, I know it's not possible for everyone because people need money to pay bills and stuff. I think the people you work with is more important than the place you work or the thing that you work on. Just based on my own personal experiences, I would say like try and find a team of people people who, are, who just bring you joy to work alongside every day. Talented, like awesome people that you actually get along with. And I think you'll be happy in your job. I know we're a bit pressed for time, so we're gonna move on from questions about the team. We'll save some for a future Q&A. And now to our final section, we just have a few more personal questions. What is your favorite pet in Adopt Me? Huh. Um, penguin's pretty good, huh? Yeah, I really like the penguin. What a great pet, hold on. Turtle? Turtle has has some great animations. Terrible name though. <laughs> <laughs> From a previous video, yeah. I think it might be Penguin. Let me look at it. <laughs> iconic. The dragon and the um, the unicorn are very iconic as well. I can see why people like them so much. They're like the original legendaries. I mean, these upcoming monkeys are pretty good. <laughs> not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about them. We we put a twist on it, which we haven't shared yet. I think you're gonna like it. I think the monkey might might blow people's minds. I'm really excited for, for that to come out. And more importantly, I'm excited to make a video announcing it. Or like monkeys with an S. Leaks. <laughs> Official leaks. What other games? Oh, Jesse, this is big. Hold on. Are you going to put a bowler hat on the penguin? Obviously. <laughs> yes, I'm here for it. Have you got a monocle? Not in this rotation. <sighs> but that is rad. What other games do you find inspiration from? I find inspiration, personally, I find inspiration from a ton of games. And I know other people on the team do as well. More specifically, recently, we've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing uh, on Nintendo Switch, which is really fun. And it's a good game to like chill out after work. So I think that game has a ton of polish in it and a ton of really neat ideas, which which more games should be doing. Yeah, Animal Crossing, uh, Stardew Valley, um, a lot of like online e-games from back in the day um, are very inspirational for us, I think. You know, your Neopets, your Habbo Hotel, um, Sim, just kind of games where you kind of spend time. I get a lot of my inspiration from outsider games as well. So like 
uh, movies, TV shows, books, uh, comics, and podca- a lot of podcasts I listen to. Uh, music, you know, I think it's good to uh, architecture even. Like, I think it's good to reach outside of the game and, and learn things. Like, for instance, Beefing um, references a lot of architecture and architectural lessons in 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 his work. So that's just one example of how you can you can pull things from outside of games into games. I think it's too. If you only play games, then you can only make games which are like other games. Where some of my favorite games are in, have been inspired by things out wildly outside the scope. Like the team on Breath of the Wild said that um, they pulled a lot from from nature and from like design principle, which I think you can tell when you play it. If you ever decided to make another game, what kind of game would you personally love to make? Oh, um, I don't know. Yeah, I have thought about this before. Like personally, I. I I kind of miss making um, fight like games with fighting in them, like PvP games, because you can like balance combat and weapons and abilities and stuff. So that was fun. Uh, maybe I'd like to do that again someday. But but on the whole, I I think I'm not that fussed about the type of game I'm making. If the team is good and the game is good, then you it's there's always like interesting problems to solve. So I'm not too fussed about my personal preferences for what's good. I'd rather make something that's like fun for a lot of people, like Adopt Me. Like Adopt Me isn't my favorite game ever, um, but it's my favorite every game to work on for sure we are we are very pressed for time and i do need to let you get back to your actual job uh, rather than just listen to questions from me so we're going to end with a final question do you enjoy doing your very hard job and what part of it brings you the most joy and why is it working with me i added that last <laughs> bit that wasn't in the original question very hard is 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 debatable <laughs> It's definitely stressful and, and hard work sometimes, but a lot of the time it's just fun and joy and things that come very naturally to me and like my personality, my experiences and stuff. So do I enjoy it? Yes. Do I enjoy it all the time? No, like every, even the best jobs in the world have moments where you're you're not enjoying yourself. Building out the team is definitely very re- rewarding because if you're just doing work, then and you know, you do the work and then you feel good about it. But if building out the team is like, adding more people who can do more work. But if, if you like add a person to the team, you're adding, you know, hundreds, thousands of hours of work across the year. And then seeing people like thrive, bringing people like you and Z onto the team and then seeing you all like just do a good job and do cool stuff and learn and grow whilst also getting paid is, is probably the most rewarding part of the job for me, Jesse. So in a sense, it is working with you. <laughs> That's the most rewarding part of the job. <laughs> just not in the way you meant. <laughs> I have one. I have an answer for that question, actually. Um, Working me, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> no, my favorite part of the job is every Friday when we premiere the new update video oh, yeah. live and just seeing like that initial surge of reaction and excitement. That's fun, yeah. Pe- people don't see all of the work, but Jess- Jesse puts a lot of work into those videos. Like they're very short, but they require like writing and ed- and game capture and editing and then like making changes based on feedback and then uploading the video and then like. Yeah, setting it live. So it's like days of work that go into that. Thank you very much for joining us today, Josh. And uh, thanks very much to our community for sending in those questions. We'd definitely love to do something like this again in the future, either with Josh or with different members of the team. More people, yeah, we'll get more people on. Anyone who's comfortable speaking on the microphone can answer some questions, more specific questions about their job or stuff they worked on. Stuff. I think there's a lot of interest in like uh, work that our animators and our programmers and our artists etc do and like even our support staff like that's such a an interesting side of the job that a lot of people never get to see but it's also a lot of people's first steps into game development. I think there's because of the nature of Roblox games which are normally worked on by like one or two people two people or just very small teams who are very quiet and private it's hard for a lot of players to understand like the sheer amount of work that goes on behind the scenes. But trust me when I say that every single top game has people on Roblox has people behind it who are just working, working their butts off to to make the game the cool, fun games you play. When you're talking to developers or talking about developers, yeah, I would just keep in mind that everyone is just trying their best to make a good game. Please let us know in the comments if you'd like to see more of these and who you'd like to see on it, what kind of roles you'd like to see us talk to, and also drop any questions you'd like. Um, We do put a call out for questions when we're gonna do the video, but we do read pretty much all of our comments and pretty much all of our ads and notifications all across our channels. So we take note as and when things come in and we just love hearing from you. Like the, the game is, Adopt Me is built around community. So hearing from our community is the single most important thing to us. Yes, it is. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for being here, Josh. We'll see you next time. We'll see you on Friday for a cool update that isn't monkeys uh, yet. Oh, yeah. Did we even announce it? I, I, don't I know. have no idea. Where's Pirates? <laughs> if you made it to the end of this video, <laughs> we haven't announced we it. We actually did leaks. There's some pirate content. <laughs> 
We could add an Arnold potion. <laughs> Tran- magically transform your pet into Arnold. If you want to see the Arnold potion added to Adopt Me, please let us know in the comments. 